Okay, so today is Tuesday, August 18th, and these are four things that I told you today in class we needed to make sure to get so that you could understand your homework well. And um, fourth period, we got through most of them. We didn't touch on this one. Fifth period, we got through all of them, but all of them, either way, we spent very little time on this because we spent a lot of time on homework. So I just wanted to go back over some of these things with you just to make sure it's really clear. Remember that when you're watching a video I've made, you can replay it as many times as you want or skip over whatever you want. And I'm going to hit these things in this order. So if you want to skip ahead to something else, first talking about graphing on the complex plane, finding the absolute value of a complex number, dividing complex numbers or division with complex numbers, and simplifying when you have like i to a power. Okay, so again, the compact complex plane basically means I have two axes, and this is the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis. So when I look at a complex number, I look at it in two parts. For instance, the number 2 plus 5i. I graph the real part left to right, and I graph the imaginary part up and down. You don't really have to do anything with the i. The I is understood on the um, vertical axis. So in other words, I go 2 to the right, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's where 2 plus 5I would be graphed. Okay, or maybe I go, let's say, negative 3 minus I. Okay, that would mean I'd go 3 to the left, 2, 3, and down 1. So again, I is your vertical axis. So this is 1i, 2i, 3i, 4i, 5i, negative 1i, negative 2i, negative 3i, and so on. And the real numbers axis is your horizontal axis. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just the way it normally is. And that's how you graph complex numbers. So again, for instance, t let's say we had um, 7 minus um, 4i. 7 minus 4i would be going 7 to the right, and then down 4. So it would be about right here. And that's how you graph a complex number. Now finding the absolute value of a complex number has to do with the graph, because absolute value comes from distance away from 0. So we're looking at distance away from the origin. So if I want the absolute value of 2 plus 5i, now if I change this to say absolute value of this, that means I want to know how far that point is from 0, 0. So I could think of it as Pythagorean theorem. Remember, distance formula and Pythagorean theorem are basically two different forms of the same thing. I go 2 to the right and up 5 to get here. So that's like a right triangle where this is the hypotenuse. If I want to find the hypotenuse of this right triangle, I would do 2 squared plus 5 squared and then take the square root. So that's what I'm going to do. So absolute value of 2 plus 5i is the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared. Okay, hard to see it there. So that's the square root of 4 plus 25, which is 29. And that's my answer. Let's not change it to a decimal, leave it the way it is. So the absolute value of 2 plus 5i is the square root of 29. Okay, notice that complex numbers are written in the form a plus bi. So what we basically did here, if this is my a plus bi, the horizontal component is a. The vertical component is b, just by itself. That's 5 up. So basically, the absolute value of a complex number becomes the square root of a squared plus b squared. So it's got a lot in common with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so for instance, let's look at absolute value of 4 minus 7i. Well, that would be the square root of 4 squared plus negative 7 squared. That's my a squared, here's my b squared. That's going to be 16 plus 49. And that's going to be 65. So square root of 65, I don't think that simplifies, and that would be my answer. So absolute value of 
3 plus 10i. And remember, when you're watching a video, you can go ahead and pause at any time and try something yourself. That would be 3 squared plus 10 squared, which is square root of 109, and I believe that's as simple as it gets. So let me just give you a few to try real quick. So go ahead and try those three. Pause the video, try those three, start the video up again, and you'll see if you got them right. That's 2 squared plus 6 squared under here, so that's 4 plus 36, that's square root of 40. That does simplify. 4 times 10, so we've got 2 root 10. Be easier to see if I moved it over a little bit. Um, on this one, A is 0. So 0 squared, we don't have to write that, plus negative 5 squared, so it's just going to be 5. That makes sense because this would be where? In the coordinate plane, or the, excuse me, not coordinate plane, but the complex plane, negative 5i would be just going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down the i axis, the imaginary axis. So it's just 5 away from 0. Okay, and this one would be 4 squared plus negative 5 squared. So that's 16 plus 25, which is square root of 51, square root of 41, sorry. And that would be it. Okay, so that is graphing on the complex plane and absolute value of a complex number. Couple of examples. We did spend a little bit more time on this, but let me just give you some more practice problems for um, rationalizing your denominator, which basically means I have an I in the denominator, that's not okay, so I need to get rid of it. Okay, if you want to just pause after I've written these and try them, that's perfectly good. And then you can tune back in and see what I got. How about... All right, on the first one, on these two up here, they kind of work differently. No um, plus or minus in the denominator. If it's only one term in your denominator, just multiply by i over i. So this is 5i over 2i squared, which is 5i over 2 times negative 1, or 5i over negative 2. And that's my answer. Um, this one. We distribute the top because it's something with two terms times something with one term. So this is 4i plus 3i squared over negative, i squared is negative 1, so that's minus negative 1, basically. This becomes a negative 1 also. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So you have negative 3 plus 4i over, this is going to be 1, so that's just negative 3 plus 4i. Now, if you do have a plus or a minus in your denominator, you actually have to multiply by the complex conjugate, which in this case is 1 minus 3i, and in this case is 7 minus 2i. It's not always minus, it's the opposite sign from whatever you have. So here you will do basically FOIL, on top and on bottom. Same thing, well down here it's actually distributive property on top. Let's see, this one's going to be negative 20i on top. And on the bottom, we have 10. That's going to work out kind of nicely and give me 2i. This one is going to be, let's see, I'll just go ahead and do this one.
on top, sorry, I'm so weirdly angled here. <clears throat> on top, this turns into a negative one, so we have negative 12 minus 42i. And on the bottom, this turns into plus four, so this is a 53, and that does not simplify, and that's my final answer. Last but not least, um, and I'm actually, let me just make this a separate video. Um, fifth period, you don't need to see the next one. Fourth period, you might.